Good morning. The St. Regis Parish Faith Community gathers for the liturgical celebration of the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. We ask you to fully participate in the liturgy as a community by praying and singing together. The second collection is for the monthly religious education fund. There are several announcements. Our Lenten lecture series starts after Ash Wednesday on Monday, February 23rd at 6.15 in the evening, continues for four Mondays and are an hour in length. More information about our Lenten series is in the bulletin. The Teenage Youth Chorale practice is today after the 9.30 a.m. Mass. The Children's Chime Ensemble will practice this Wednesday at 4 p.m. and the Adult Handbell Choir will practice at 7 p.m. also on Wednesday. Anyone wishing information about any of the choirs should call the music office as soon as possible. The Knights of Columbus invite all interested in protecting life to join them on the sidewalk in front of the Planned Parenthood office in downtown Pittsburgh to participate in the 40 Days for Life prayer vigil on Sunday, February 22nd, between the hours of 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. See the bulletin for more information. Also, the Knights of Columbus will have their annual Coins of Vocations collection after Mass for the next three weekends. Don't forget, next Sunday is our mini Mardi Gras in Gillen Hall. The food bank collection is this weekend. Monetary donations are also accepted. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Nice to see everybody here today. If we have visitors, we welcome you as we always do. Let's take a moment to stand and welcome one another in the peace of Christ. And now we take a moment to open our hymnals to number 687. Your hands, O Lord, in days of old. 687, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. 
Again, so nice to see all of you here. Nice singing, as always. And as we reflect upon the words of the opening hymn, that kind of should give us a little bit of a hint of what our readings are uh, trying to uh, teach us today, the healing power of Christ in our lives and the hope that we all should have in him. Let's pause for a moment and think of the healing that we need in our lives, whether it is physical healing, emotional or spiritual, whatever it may be, the Lord is there to help us and if not heal us as we wish, at least give us the grace to endure whatever we may have to face. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King. O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, so that relying solely upon the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Where's our youngsters? I know we got a bunch of them here today. Hi there. Hi there. Oh, yeah. Hey, those that are just walking in, let go of mom's hand and keep coming this way. Not you, Zach, you say with mom, but the younger ones. No? Okay. All right, good morning. Happy Valentine's Day. Well, it's almost. I mean, when I opened up the paper this morning, that's all I saw was Valentine's sales, so it must be pretty close, huh? Yeah. What's Valentine's all about? loving people, and we're going to hear in our stories today how much God loves us and cares for us as well, okay? So, I like this guy in his camo jacket. Come here, what's your name, buddy? What's his name? Finley. Finley, how are you today? Okay, good. I, you talk a lot too. Okay, come here. Come here. Who's his bigger sister? One of you his bigger sister? Okay, one of you help him. Put your hands up, buddy. There you go. Okay. Yeah, you might have to help him here. Okay, good. Okay. And as we pray for you to hear the word of God and to learn how to live by it, we're going to pray for ourselves also so all of us can do what God wants us to, but also so that we know how much he loves us. And the people all say, amen. Okay. Go ahead. Turn around. There you go. I think Daddy's going to have to go with her. Send forth the children of God. Let them hear the good news. Send forth the children of God. Let them hear the good news. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, 
a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor, blessed be the Lord. The Lord hears the cry of the poor, blessed be the Lord. I will the Lord at all times with praise ever in my mouth let my soul glory in the Lord who will hear the cry of the poor the Lord hears the cry of the poor, blessed be the Lord. Let the lowly hear and be glad. The Lord listens to their pleas, and to hearts broken God is near. Who will hear? The cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Blessed be the Lord. Every spirit crushed, God will save. Will be. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my recompense? That, when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. 
the word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord be with each of you. And now let us listen attentively to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother in law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages so that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. And so he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Who's on crutches? What did you do? Sports injury? What sports you in? Are you really? Are you good? <laughs> I like, yeah. So let's, let's see if you think you're, are you good? She's a little, uh, you got to work on her self-esteem a little bit there. Okay. How long are you on those crutches? So you're out of the games for quite a while. Yeah, Yeah, tough luck. (laughs) Good luck there, too. Uh, Which brings us to the opening question for today's homily. Why do bad things happen to good people? And that is the question that we ask so often. Why do bad things happen to good people? We've heard that question. You may have even asked it yourself. We hear people say, if God is so good, why doesn't he do something with the problems in the world? If God is so good, why did he allow this to happen to this little child or to that family or whatever the situation may be? We see it in the news. We hear it, read it in a paper. We see it in our neighborhoods. And unfortunately, there really is not a good answer to the question, at least not an answer that we would like to hear. Because so often I use the example, we humans many times have these invisible blinders on, so to speak. We live in the here and now, and we can only see what is immediately around us, But God is able to see the bigger picture. And one of the things that we need to keep in mind is what we hear Paul talking about in in his letter, but also 
following the example of Jesus. We got to get ourselves moving and be active in the way we share the gospel, the message, the good news. Because if we do not, then people continue to brood over all these problems. The story of Job is an interesting one. It's a short story. Um, it really doesn't take that long to read. I encourage everybody here to uh, open up your Bibles at home if you're into the uh, electronic age like I am a little bit with reading. Uh, get onto your devices and uh, Google in or maybe just get an app for the Bible and read the book of Job, the story of Job. Job was a very good individual. The Bible uses the word righteous. He did everything that God wanted him to do. And one day, as the story goes, the devil and God are having a conversation with each other. And God points out to the devil how good an individual Job actually is. And the devil, in his sarcastic way, says, yeah, he's good because you're blessing him with a big family and with a lot of possessions and a good farm. But take that away from him. Let's see if he continues to bless you. Let's see if he continues to be faithful. And so God says, okay, you're on. But one condition, you cannot lay a finger on his physical person. And so the story begins to unfold as his children are killed through natural disasters. Marauders come in and take all of his livestock. Storm comes through, destroys his crops. And all of that, Job's answer is, blessed be God forever. And so God and the devil are talking again, and so now the devil is allowed to inflict some physical uh, boils is what it's called in the Bible. Okay, so he's got these skin lesions. And now his wife's saying, why don't you just admit you did something wrong? And that's why God is punishing you. Three of his friends come by. They see his pitiful condition. Why don't you just admit you did something wrong? And the whole thing is, that was the mentality of the people back then. That if some physical disability came upon them, if death came unexpectedly to a family member, either that person or somebody within the family must have done something wrong in the sight of God, and that was how God punished them. But we know that is not the way God works. We know that today. And so this book of Job is trying to show us how God actually does work, and it's not through uh, physical pain and the such. The bottom line of the story is Job comes out through it all. He never did curse God. We get a small piece of the dialogue he is having with God at this point. He is pouring out his guts to God, complaining. He eventually is asking God, why is this happening to me? But he still doesn't curse God. He's just questioning. And eventually... God, and I'm obviously giving you the uh, abridged version of it all, God eventually says, but wait a minute, who's in charge here? Who's in charge? And Job comes to realize God is the one who is in charge. That's the one lesson we get out of the book of Job, but the other lesson is that of fidelity remaining faithful to God despite adversities in our lives. Paul has a beautiful thing that he shares in this little selection that he writes to the church in Corinth, I believe it is. Yeah. And I mentioned this briefly. Um, an obligation has been imposed upon me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. And a little bit further on, he goes on to show how he was able to share the message of God with other people. He says, to the weak I became weak to win over the weak. To others I became what they were so as to win over some of them. He tried to accommodate people wherever they were. 
And that's tough when you stop to think about it because wherever we are on the plane of um, religious knowledge, wherever we are within the scope of um, other people, some are more affluent than we are, some are less affluent. Some uh, have a little bit more material wealth, others do not. And the poor, trying to preach to such a wide scope of people becomes challenging at times. To the old, to the young, how do you deliver the same message without being too um, elementary or without being too far above the heads of those who don't understand what we're talking about? And so Paul recognized that. And he was able to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Bridge all of that. He was able to bridge those gaps and reach everybody in some way. And you see, each of us, not just us people with this collar, but every one of us because of the, our baptism, we all have been empowered with the responsibility of preaching the gospel to others. How do we hand it on to our kids? How do we hand on the faith to our grandkids or our godchildren? How do we live our faith in the workplace or in the classrooms or at social gatherings? Again, it's not a matter of standing on a street corner, holding a Bible and beating people over their head if they do not say, I believe. It's the way we live our lives. How do we do it so that other people can come to realize the power of God in their lives and our life? And Jesus, Jesus began his public ministry uh, in Capernaum. And we may recall from last week's gospel, who wants to help me out? What, we, what were we talking about from last week's gospel? Who remembers? Where was Jesus last, in our se uh, selection for last week? We heard it in the opening sentence. Where was he? I hear somebody saying it. Or else it's just a nervous. He was in the synagogue last week, remember? And what was he doing in the synagogue besides preaching and teaching? What else did he do? Yes, where did I hear that? That's not like, yeah, there you are. That was you that said that. He healed the man who was possessed with the demon. That was earlier in the day. What we're hearing today is still the same day where we picked up last week. And now he is going into Simon Peter's mother-in-law's home where she is sick with a fever. And Jesus takes with him some of his disciples. God bless you. And he heals her. But do you see what the mother-in-law did as soon as she was healed? What did she do? She got up and began to serve the people who were there. All these people were in her house to take care of her while she was sick. Now that she recognized the healing that took place, she now begins to wait on them. One of the things that you hear me say so often, one of the best ways of showing our gratitude to God for the many ways he blesses us is by how? Serving each other. Now in all of this, Jesus is getting tired in that physical human body of his. And he wants to get out of the house for a while, but we hear People are still pressing at the doors, trying to get in, to get a little bit of a touch of him, to get a little bit of a healing, a little bit of this. And I would have said, wait a minute, people. I'm tired. Give me a break. Come back tomorrow. Anyone with me on that? But he didn't. He continued to go on. And how was he able to do that? He began every day with prayer. Because we hear, finally, when he got done, he went away early the next morning to be alone in prayer with his father. Prayer is powerful. Job obviously recognized the power of prayer. We know that Paul did, and we know 
obviously, that Jesus did. And so we come full circle returning to that first question. Why do bad things happen to good people? Job was righteous. He didn't deserve all the heartache that he experienced. But he remained faithful. Paul, who was a convert, spent the remainder of his life preaching the gospel. And many times he was shipwrecked. Many times he was beaten and flogged with iron bars. Many times he was starved. He didn't deserve that. And yet he remained faithful, preaching the gospel. And Jesus, the Son of God, God himself, he didn't deserve to die on a cross for you and me, but he did it because he loves us and he cares for us. And so why do good things happen to bad people? Or bad things, excuse me, bad things happen to good people? Really no real answer to it. But the thing we do learn is through the power of prayer, we can remain faithful to what God asks of us. And one of the things God asks of us is to always be living our lives in such a way that our lives are a continuous sermon to the people around us. A sermon that speaks of God's love for us, his care for us, the hope that awaits each and every one of us. This past week when I was doing my communion calls, had the radio on, as I always do, listening to NPR, and I can't remember now what day of the week it was that I heard the news, but you're all familiar with the story. Uh, again, ISIS militant group uh, with the Jordanian pilot, dousing him with a flammable liquid and then setting him on fire. And I almost hit the brakes and pulled off the road as I says, Dear God, when is this going to end? When is this going to end? And this morning as I'm looking at the paper, front page, local Monroeville Mall, again, last evening in lockdown. It's not even safe to go shopping. When is it going to end? Sometimes I pray that God steps in like he did 2,000 years ago and says, enough is enough. But you see, he's not going to do that just yet. He'll do it when he's ready. But until that time, he's depending on you and me to do something about it. And that's why we gather as a people of faith every week, and some of you every day of the week, because it is through prayer that we are able to move the world in the direction that God would like it to be. We come here not only with our own intentions, we come here praying for each other as well. Whatever our burdens may be, whether they be physical, emotional, or spiritual, we pray for each other. We pray for our national leaders, our world leaders, and our spiritual leaders. We pray for the people who are suffering these injustices that they have every day of their lives. And so, as we come together again today, we come to unite our prayers. We come to unite our prayers so that those who are suffering may in some way recognize God is still with them. He has not abandoned them. God does hear the cry of the poor, as we heard in Psalm 34 a little bit earlier. God does hear the cry of the poor. God is patient, and God's patience is so that conversion can take place. And so our prayers are for that conversion, a spiritual and a moral conversion of our nation and the world. We come together for that hope-filled message that people will change and become more godlike in the way they live their lives.
I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit who was born of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. Again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, test one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life of the world to come. Let us pray. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church, through her sacraments, may continue to reveal Jesus' healing power to the world. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians may be a witness to the good news wherever there is a loss of hope. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will renew our efforts in personal prayer, communing with the Father and interceding for those in need, as Jesus did, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the St. Regis Parish Faith Community, that our community may continue far into the future on its journey to know, love, and serve God, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the St. Regis Parish, that God will bless his parish with monetary stability through the generosity of parishioners. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, for Margaret Lawrence Bucar, and for the people of the parish, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us, and during this Mass we remember Richard Fell, Charles Gozdanovich, and Mary Mazur. May they be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom of God. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold deep in our hearts, which we now pause to add. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of our men and women in the armed services, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those whom the Lord may be calling to serve as a priest, brother or sister, deacon, or other related ministry within the life of the church, that they be willing to follow the call of the Lord in a spirit of generosity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving God, we ask that you hear and answer our prayers in your infinite wisdom. We know, Lord, that you are always with us, that you are always watching over us. Strengthen us in that belief and enable us to share that message with others so that through our efforts they may know the, hope, the hopeful message that you love and care for them. We make this prayer in your holy name and unite it with the name of Mary. Amen. Amen. 